Hello and welcome back to Take Refuge 3D with me Peter. Now I use plasticity in conjunction with Blender a lot and in this video we're going to go over some of my favorite plugins to use with uh, Blender on plasticity meshes. So stick around if that's something that you're interested in and just before we get into it if you want to buy plasticity and you want a 10% discount you can use the code REFUGE10 at checkout uh, for a 10% discount off the total cost so that applies to both the studio and the indie licenses so don't hesitate to go and do that right away now let's crack into it let's move over into blender because this is going to be mostly in blender so first of all um, I want to talk about the blender bridge now the blender bridge uh, comes with plasticity when you buy it okay and what it does is it live links plasticity to Blender. So what we can do once we've installed it and everything, uh, this is not an installation tutorial, we can just hit refresh and our model from plasticity comes across. Um, now you could just use the exporter to do this um, and that's great, but it comes with some extra tools as well. So what I first of all want to do, we'll just stick wireframe on so you can see what's going on. This is what we get. This is a preview model. If you start trying to edit this, you're going to get some problems because it's not made in Blender yet. You need to refacet it for this to work, which works like an importer kind of. So I actually like to drag these right down so I get the maximum detail and choose end on and refacet it. And this is what we've got. And where this comes in super handy is like, let's say I just want to um, select those whole faces and Blender, I would have to go down and I'd have to do, you know, or maybe select them one by one, depending on the model and it gets annoying. Um, you know, I can just select one of these and then if I just select the whole face that's in plasticity. So if we go back over to plasticity, you'll see that the plasticity mesh, that's just a single face right so that's just a single face and then over in blender we can use we can use that and we can use that for the purposes of UVing so let's just select both of these click UV unwrap and just do a sim simple unwrap okay and we've got both of those there so then I can just select one of these and press Control M X mirror it I could stack these two all right so I've got them stacked and then I can just go and select one of these select the plasticity faces again and then I can do something uh, really cool which I'm going to show you in our next plugin that I like which is Zen UV there's a lot more that you can do with Blender Bridge um, I have done a tutorial I think it's time for an updated one soon but um, uh, I'm going to talk about Zen UV now so Zen UV is a great asset for managing your UVs um, so as you remember I unwrapped uh, those two faces now I can just go and transform them because like I don't want those sitting on top of each other I want to utilize the space as maximum as possible so what I can do then is I can just go over here and I can increment one of those faces in a certain direction right we'll go back to plasticity we'll select both of our oh, actually I've got it saved here my quick favorites and that is exactly one UV square across which means that I can make the most of this space over here and everything is going to match on that side so if I wanted to do one side of the gun to exactly match the other side of the gun um, then I can um, basically have everything separated out like that so that's really handy um, there's other things so if I select everything or if I select nothing in fact and just go into edge mode and we go into select we can just go select the sharp edges which have already been made by the blender bridge so if we go select by sharp and then I can just right click and mark those as seams and then I can just go and unwrap this whole thing okay so I could just go UV unwrap bam okay and then it's unwrapped everything that was marked like that or it's got its own little algorithm okay so if we just select everything and go up to unwrap and we do a zen unwrap okay you can see here we can go whole mesh selected only you know you've got all of your options okay and we'll just go zen unwrap 
and it does its own little thing and it's unwrapped everything like that okay so that's really cool now um, I'm not necessarily happy with the way that was packed so the next thing that we're going to look at is UV Packmaster which I've got down here over here so UV Packmaster has got a, quite a lot of settings but um, one of the ones that I quite like um, is heuristic search okay and what that will do is when I go to uh, press pack on this it will just keep packing it and packing it and you'll be able to see down here that you are starting to use more and more UV space so it'll keep thinking as long as you let it until it uses the most space so it's gone up increment by increment and we started with using um, it looks like 5.35 of the space and now we're using 5.4 of the space so especially if a lot of the um, space is really really important to you that you need to use up as much as possible then this is a really good tool it's got a lot of other uh, features like normalize islands so we can pack that it's going to do something different right and it's starting to use quite a lot more of the space now anyway so that's uv pack master uh, zen uv and uv pack master are both played plugins um, as is the next one that i'm going to show you so the next one that I'm going to show you is probably one of my favorites um, and I use this for like uh, sculpting and um, uh, scans all the time. Um, it's not really the best for hard surface meshes but if you want to start to make something that's really cool and stylized um, this is going to be a really cool one. You do need to play with the settings a bit. Now over here it says take care with this use normal splitting and usually you wouldn't use this but with a plasticity import using normal splitting seems to get a better result a lot of the times. Now what I will say about your plasticity mesh, try not to, I did this on purpose, I, I didn't fill it anything per se on this apart from I think just this one down here and at the back here um, because it you're going to get funny results. I'm also going to mirror this on the Y axis so I don't get a funny uh, inconsistent result on either side. And I think normal splitting, adaptive size 50 and a quad count of 5000 and we'll remesh it and we'll see what happens. Boom. Now we've got a quad based mesh. Now you might find that you need to do some cleanup. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Um, there'll be little bits like here that you want to clean up. And if we go into here, We've got all of these sharp marks and all of that. So what I like to do is I like to just go straight away and clear the sharps, okay? So if we get rid of our wireframe, we're now looking at that. And obviously there's a few little patches that need cleaning on this, but we won't worry about those too much right now. We're getting a much better result now. Okay, there's still a few little funky results here. And we've still got our original mesh hidden, okay? But what we can do now is, like I said, we'll go clear all of those uh, sharps, okay? Um, and take it into object mode. And we'll just press control three, okay? And obviously, if there's cleanup that you need to do, do it. But this is really great for concepting and also getting more stylized meshes. So now that we've got the subdivided mesh, um, what we can do is we can start to go and add details. So I just want to go into edit mode. I'm going to go into face mode and I'm just going to start selecting some different parts. We'll just turn this off temporarily. And we'll turn our subdivision back on and we can just extrude these faces inwards. Okay. And we'll turn this on. And what we can start to do is we can start to and once we've done that and we've got these uh, edges selected we can just start to crease okay go back and you can see that we're starting to get these like really cool details on our gun and you can do the same you can you know um, I don't know we could do something like this turn on lasso and just lasso the rest of these okay and we could just uh, inset that extrude it in inset it again and stuff like that so look you're getting the best of both worlds so you've 
made your base and plasticity and now you're starting to do details and for concepting and stuff like that that's really cool obviously you can do stuff like that in plasticity but you're not always going to get the same results so like i said the best of both worlds and sometimes you'll get a funny little funky stuff over here um you can just delete those uh pressing the wrong button you can delete those faces and you can just add them back in like that and obviously you can mirror it over and whatnot so that's really cool so the next thing that we want to talk about we'll just delete all of these okay is Engon Pro and this one's a little bit of self promo um, but it is something that I use myself a lot I made it for me in the first place so we'll just go back with a fresh one we'll uh, refacet this again okay and we'll just quickly look at what Engon Pro does. So the purpose of Engon Pro is to get this plasticity Engon based mesh or any um, hard surface or even non hard surface mesh, but a, a mesh with Engons in it and to lower the detail while maintaining the surface, uh, the surfaces. Now this particular mesh won't be a very good example but um, because it's got lots of flat surfaces, but basically you can create a low poly um, and you can create a high poly version. Okay, you can edit the details. Um, you can add vertex colors. Um, you can rename the naming conventions and then there's UV tools. And we've got this one click low poly button up here. Be careful because you can do this on as many meshes that you like. So if you've got a hundred meshes, you can um, uh, click the button and it'll do it to everything. But when you click this button, a couple of algorithms are running and it's adding modifiers to a stack. So it'll be going through a lot. So join any meshes that you think that you can join together before clicking one click low poly, or you can just choose mesh by mesh or selected meshes only and click the low poly button. But let's just tick on the wireframe and see what happens. Okay. so. We'll click create low poly. Oh, one click low poly, in fact. Okay. And one click, this is what we got. It may at first look like it's just triangulated the mesh, but it's also decimated it and transferred the data, which is hidden down here, and the original uh, mesh um, of the normals back onto the mesh. So if we turn our wireframe off, it doesn't look very different from what we had originally. Okay, and you can also refine the details right down to, you can refine the details to what you need it for. So as we go down and down, or you can have super high detail. And if we turn wireframe on, you'll be able to see this working on the fly. So um, it's really, really handy in that regard. And I've done full videos on this before, so no really need to go over it. Now, it will be on sale uh, this upcoming week on the Blender Market. So if it's something that you are interested in or you've thought about it and, and you've seen it before, but yet you didn't like the $10 price tag, then you can go and get it on Blender Market um, uh, for, I think it might be 30% off. It might be 25 or 30. I can't remember. Okay. And then um, there's also tools. So this is fully um, non-destructive. So you can just um, remove all the modifiers, remove the suffixes, and you're good to go. You're back where you started. And then you can create a high poly. So, and then you can remove modifiers and back it, remove the suffix, create a low poly, right? You can see that they look different. And what you'll see is it's preserving this curve that we had from the beginning right so we get, we have this curve so if we just look at it in this mode and then we create a low poly we'll preserve this curve okay and that's the beauty of it so you get less artifacts and it's great now finally um what i want to talk about so we'll just go um go back and we'll do the one click low poly Okay, the reason is, is we've got this unwrapped and packed already as by clicking the one click low poly, you, you've got that packed already. So I'm just gonna do a quick pack on this one. All right, 
to get some extra detail. And then I want to talk about Blender Kit. So, um, Blender Kit is a partially free, okay, um, asset creation, uh, sorry, asset download um, resource. Um, I make uh, stuff to put on there and they've got a lot of uh, materials and all the materials are free. So if you just wanted to do a quick um, material and just whack it on your on your mesh, um, that might not be the best one. Let's have a look at um, all for free. So let's just find a nice looking one for a gun. Hopefully this one will do. And there you go. We've got this cool texture. All right. And you can open up your UVs and it's done a, looks like it's done some kind of quad. It's, it's unwrapped it for us when we've done that one because it's designed for a quad remesh. So Blender Kit is free. Um, and if you look down in the um, uh, description, you can get a 15% uh, discount off Blender Kit if you use my link. And that's about it for that one, guys. Um, I'll see you in the next one. Uh, thanks for watching. Like and sub. Uh, more content coming up very soon. Tschüss.